Hello, everybody. Welcome. Is uh, I don't remember what, what is the date today. I can't even remember. March sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah, we don't have a regular selectmen's meeting, so is a meeting between the planning board, Envision Berwick, and the Berwick selectmen. Is uh, since it's not an official meeting, there's no roll call or anything like that. So, welcome. Yeah. Is I'm going to turn it over to James and let him run the meeting because sure. he set the agenda. Yeah, let me go over here. You guys hear me at home? Those in attendance? Yes. Cool. Yeah. People are still filing in, so we'll give them a couple more minutes to, to file in. I'll... Hey, Elise. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Great. Good. Uh, just a note on the agenda. I took down... Uh, solar and impact fees i think that's something we can talk about at a later date the uh, primary agenda item here i think is the the tiff development plan and figuring out the main thing here i think what we can um, accomplish tonight is a way forward to um, at least think about how we can accomplish some of the major capital plans that have been in our downtown plan um, we're starting to see construction and i have some TIF revenue projections to go over and just some pretty interesting things. And we stand, um, we have a great opportunity with um, regional efforts are pointing towards Berwick for, for funding opportunities and with the stimulus funding um, and, and, and the Biden administration pointing towards infrastructure, there's a couple um, opportunities for, for funding that's going to come our way. So you hear the, the, one of the, the buzzwords we've been using recently is shovel-ready projects. So you'll hear that a lot. And this is a um, planning board, select board, and Envision Berwick uh, meeting. Some things are more planning focused. The marijuana cap review is obviously uh, a big planning board issue. Ridley Road, Hatfield, that's going to be more for thinking about it and to put in your back, the back burner for now. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And the TIF development program, that's um, got recreational um, implications. It's Envision Berwick and, yeah, has the real potential to transform our town. So I'll just start slowly while everyone's trickling in here. Um, so this is the TIF development plan. And why don't you give some history, James? So, because there's some people here who are not familiar with it. Sure. So, uh, TIF is a, a way to capture the increased um, development across the street, and it has uh, some some positive financial benefits for the town, where for state subsidies and things like that are and state funding our um, increased value is sheltered for the life of this um, tiff so what i have here is some projections for revenue for the town and there are some assumptions made pretty simple um the mill rate is just based off inflation as just uh, a way to increase the the revenue that's going to come in so the goal is the goal here is to create something that is accurate but conservative so the we expect the site to be built out i mean if if everything goes well five years 50 million dollars um so i put the put it a little bit more conservative I'll jump right to it, where um, the per year revenue here. So you can see by, by 2029, we're looking at about a half a million dollars per year revenue with the TIF. So again, this comes from the, the construction across the street, where they're putting in 
100,000 square feet of new commercial space um, and the range of 150 or more apartments, uh, one and two bedroom apartments. And about, they're also putting in about. But two acres of park space as well. Are there any questions at this time? You guys can stop me. This can be pretty informal, so you can stop me with any questions. I think we might be frozen. Mm. So, yeah, Pat, um, at two, 2029, looking at a half million dollars. I'm just not hearing James at all. Uh, our no, mics, our mics off. No, not me either. No. I don't hear me either. Yeah, I have it. James, can you hear us? We can hear you. Can you hear me? James? Can, can you hear the select board? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh oh, hello. You guys should, you should be able to hear, hear, me, hear me now. Can you hear? Well, we're, get, now? we're getting an echo back now here. Testing, testing. No, we're off from. Can everybody hear us? Nope. Nope. I guess not. Say something. Say something. We're saying we can hear Terry in the background. Hello, hello. Is everybody, just real quick, James, is everybody. Can anybody hear me? What a tiff is. Nobody seems to be responding. Right Some of them. No. We can hear them, but they can't hear us. Square one. Yeah. Maybe some light. Jeremy, I can I can hear you. This is Ed. Huh? So it looks like we have Patricia's iPhone. Yeah. I just think you just talk about what the BC TV okay. has an open mic. You have a hot mic. They have questions they okay. need to ask though, just so they understand how the TIF generates money and what the TIF is, tax increment financing. So that'd be. I just don't know the the how there's so many new faces. I want to make sure they understand what it is. <clears throat> Bear with us. Can you guys hear us at all? No. no. They don't, don't appear to be responding. Is James is frozen on the screen, Terry. I don't know if that means anything. Your feed from in here seems to be dead, Terry. technical difficulties. Let me do it this way. All right, so in the meantime, until we get up back up and running, can you guys hear me now? Yes. All right, I'm just running through my yes. laptop for now. Do you guys have any questions on like what a TIF is? It's pretty- Yes, what is a TIF? Will so, you tell us what a TIF is? Yeah, so a TIF is, um, it's, it's a way that, so the um, extra value that's created from the construction, it's called, that's captured. And all that means is that added property value, the property taxes is directed towards a development program. And it's also a good method to um, incentivize development. And what we have with, Great Falls construction is a built-in incentive for the next seven years to develop as much as possible in See a short the video time period. Of James up there is frozen from before. Oh yeah, jeez. Does that answer your question? I mean, it's. I think it's easier. I, I think um, with Envision Berwick, like, I can I can present a little more on the kind of ins and outs of a TIF. But for for these purposes, it. Um, we're looking at projected per year revenue. And the big, the big ticket thing here is, and the whole point of, of everything that we're working towards, at the end of the TIF, we're gonna start capturing 100, we're gonna get 100% of the taxes back. And that's about a million and a half revenue per year. And that, also, that includes pretty low costs. Do they, can they hear us? They can just hear me. Oh, okay. We're still working through.
So that's the cumulative TIF revenue over the next 15 years. So at the end of the, at the, end of the TIF cumulative, we're looking at roughly $5 million. And I think, I think for the timeline's sake, I mean, year one, year two, year three, I mean, that might not be dead on, but I think at the, by the end of it, we're probably looking at a conservative uh, number based off of, again, 100,000 square feet of commercial space. And to give you an idea, I did, I did some analogy where I drew a comparison to, um, it's, like, it's like 26 Cumberland Farms. <laughs> That's on. That's on. But can they? Any other questions, comments? So the the meat of it here is, so now we know fifteen years will be about five million dollars in revenue. So it's about what the funding and what the, the funding should go, go towards. And we already have that developed where we have the big categories that are already spelt out in the TIF development plan. So four and a half million dollars, that's, that's mostly s sidewalks and intersection improvements. We need to replace two stoplights at, um, it's about half a million dollars to replace two stoplights and the bridge intersection and the school street wilson street intersection which by the way has been a high crash location for 30 years running we have an opportunity to fix that and to make our downtown truly walkable and aesthetic and functional and connective um, to go along with that a half a million dollars is allocated towards site amenities. So that could pay for the, our wayfinding signage, the landscaping, our, anything greenway um, related. So with the way that it, it reads in the TIF development is that a greenway is an eligible cost because it, it helps bring people downtown. So I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. We're going to want to hire um, a civil engineer to help us design. We have some work to do on, like I said, the, the bridge intersection, Sullivan Street, Eleanor's Way. Um, we still have more vision and work to do there. And um, I think one of the takeaways is to possibly work on a steering committee to help flesh out these buckets into more um, specified plants and then this is a, a breakdown of some of those projects so putting the power lines underground i reached out to cmp the past couple of days and we're going to update the um the plan to put the power lines underground the um, intersection improvements we've got a grant lined up with cacs um, there's a project to connect the CAX project to Great Falls Park, MS4 project, and we have a street lighting plan as well. So in terms of bond scenarios, just to get, get an idea to fund, because again, the, the amount was $7.9 million was the entire development program. You know, how do we get there? A lot of it's going to be grants. And then a bond can be paid back by the TIF. <clears throat> so there's different development scenarios. Borrow $3 million over 15 years. $5 million over 15 years. $3 million for 25 years. $5 million for 25 years. I think this, this is a good chart. Um, so basically the blue... Anytime the blue is over one of the horizontal lines, that's kind of the, that's the threshold where the TIF is paying for the bond completely. And that's just an average bond payment.
So the next steps um, and shovel ready projects, it's important to get some of these projects ready to go for stimulus funding. We're looking at the Ridland Road Bridge, the Diamond Hill Bridge, the MS4, um, Outfall 7, the Cax project can probably get moved up a year for this funding. There's uh, bicycle and pedestrian funding. I think over the next several months, we can work together to, we can probably get that number down from 7.9 pretty substantially. I don't know if we need that much. There's different decision points we can make where, you know, maybe there's certain segments that are asphalt sidewalk instead of concrete. Maybe we do Sullivan underground and not School Street. Whatever makes sense and whatever we have the ap appetite for. But the point is, is we have an opportunity to get the, the work that we've been talking about for years done in the similar timeline as Great Falls Construction, which is the next five or so years. So I'm happy to talk further. I can listen to you guys if you have any questions. They still can't hear us. Yeah, they can't hear. Yeah. They can hear me, but. Yeah, through your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Frank, did you want to talk about the shovel ready projects and anything that I might have missed? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I've been thinking about this a long time and uh, I guess most of you probably know that. Um, I feel that we had a good opportunity moving forward with seeking funds through the DOT, whether it was CAX money or whether it was some of Steve Landry's hit, straight DOT money. Through his um, we know we've been collecting some fees. We know the town has been forward thinking and uh, putting together warrant articles that allow us to set some money aside each year uh so that we could create some matching funds um the town's done a lot in the area of uh, studies and in some cases designs have been advanced um i had an opportunity to talk to james in the office the other day there and i indicated to him that we have a chance i believe with uh what we have in place what we know the dot and cax is committed to us and if anybody is familiar with what came out during the Obama administration stimulus, the phrase shovel ready was coined at that time back in 2008 and 2009. And basically they were looking to get the money out there and get projects going. Um, with what the um, Biden administration just did with this Rescue America plan, and if anybody had followed along with anything that Governor Mills has said, she tipped her hand a little bit the other day, um, indicating that out of that $350 billion, the state of Maine is gonna get on the order of 1.2, 1.4 billion. She said a billion, I'm saying 1.4 because I did the math using the formula that typically the federal government uses in it distributing funds across the United States. Um, that ends up being a pretty substantial amount of money coming in. We all know that the larger cities uh, are going to have their people while at work trying to seek the money. I'm talking Bangor, Augusta, the Portland area. The, the more advanced towns that have uh, full-time public works, engineering and everything in-house have, have worked with consultants they're going to be ready. I strongly believe that Berwick can stick our two cents in and get our $10 million out of that package because we can be ready in short order. Um, this could be a $10 million endeavor altogether. James has worked up some things. I, I believe these numbers came out of the municipal projects list um, that Scott Benson put together in the TIF plan, correct, James? Correct. Um, and we have and we have backup to all those numbers. We know what we use to calculate all those numbers. Um, 
we have a level of expertise, I think, throughout the town and interest throughout the town that we can make some real strong arguments that Berwick can come forward with a win-win-win project for many agencies. I look at the uh, Brownsfield project. We started out with a simple $25,000 investment at the local level, and the town parlayed that into well over $2 million. And I think we're still counting because I think Great Falls has had, a, has had an opportunity to seek some additional funds for the buildings they're gonna go forward with taking down. <clears throat> We actually have some allies, I believe, at the main DOT. Tom Rainauer, who was at the Southern Maine Regional Planning Commission and that had sat in on all of our meetings where we had invited them for uh, all the way from the downtown vision through the Envision process, has left the main Southern region and he is now at DOT. Steve Landry, who has come down and he's, he met with the town manager and he talked about the various funding programs they have and how we can merge and meet things. And that's why we've got the Solomon um, uh, Sawmill Hill, I mean, the school Sawmill Hill project underway. Um, there's also a project that the town's going to do. They're going to pave all the way from Route 236 Allen Street down Sawmill Hill. And I think I saw some marks today in front of the town hall or just up the Rochester Street way. They're gonna pave all the way from there, out Rochester Street, all the way out Hubbard Road, and it's gonna end on Route 202 in Lebanon. So they have some pieces that we know they're gonna put in. I've always followed the philosophy of dig a hole once. I mean, I'm trying to get two service connections into the property on Sawmill Hill because I don't wanna be the first one to dig the road up when they pave it. Um, that being said, I strongly believe that a small steering committee that James has recommended, I think is a good recommendation, James, um, can sit down, can boil these numbers down and make the strong argument to go up and sit down with the DOT, um, Tom Rainauer in particular and Steve Landry, to not only do these projects, but also fill in the gaps between these projects. We've got a few gaps in between these segments that would fit very well doing the entire downtown. We can make that argument and I think we would win and get their support. Then on top of that, I mentioned the stimulus that's going to come into the state. We're not quite sure how they're going to distribute that, um, but I'm sure some of that money will go into the, the main DEP revolving loan funds some of that money will go into the DOT trans various transportation programs. Um, so we're not going to bring them a, pro uh, a project, but we're not going to bring them a problem. We're going to bring them a project and we're going to show them how they have the money to, to, to actually work with us and build this thing out. And we all get a win, 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 win out of it. We're the second traveled uh, entryway into the state of Maine. We had to have a showpiece for a downtown area when people come across the bridge. So my whole point behind the shovel ready is that from my experience back in 2008, 2009, when I was working with an engineering firm that I own, we had gotten most of our clients projects that were shovel ready. And when the, when the funds came into the, to the revolving loan process through the New Hampshire DEP, um, they had 25 projects that they funded. Underwood Engineers was involved in 19 of them, 17 to 19 of them with various municipalities. So I'm not intimidated by anything that James has said or anything that we've laid out here. I'm very encouraged by it, but we need to sit down, roll up our sleeves and take this whole thing on and, and make this a win. Take our 25,000 we did for the downtown vision, turn it into two, I'd like to take everything we've done now and turn it into 10, 10 million. Okay. And I think we can do it with the right structure around it and the right timeline to act. And that's, under. that's the thing too, is like, well, yeah, the, I think the bond is a good way to kickstart a lot of this. It solves a, a sequencing problem. We want to get the power lines on the ground before we do sidewalks and street lighting. Um, but the, I think the main point is, is, is you're right, Frank, is 
combining the stimulus funding, combining the infrastructure funding, and also leveraging um, through the, the TIF funding, we can use that we can use that funding for match funds and and just keep keep leveraging the funds that we have. And we have a history of of leveraging small dollars for 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 big money. Um, also worth worth noting is within the TIF there's there's money in there for for events, downtown events, and economic development. We can go a long way with a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I would I would soft pedal the word five billion dollar bond, and, and my reason for doing that is we sold a um, million dollar bond for fire trucks. We sold a six million dollar bond recently for the public safety complex. We're talking about borrowing through the revolving loan 1.2 million for the water plant, but that'll be a user rate payment. The taxpayers will not pay that, the users will pay it. But right now people have gotten their tax bills and they've seen significant increases in those tax bills. Um, and if you walked out on the street tomorrow and said, we're gonna bond $5 million, you're, you're gonna be dead in the water. Okay, um, but you walk out on the street and you're going to say we're going to do the entire downtown. We're going to spend up to $10 million and the cost to the town will be insignificant. And we can go through a cash flow scenario, impact fees, all the revenue sources that we have. Right. And we can show that it's an, it's it's not that big of an impact on on the taxpayers. And I've been involved in projects eight million dollars, where the ratepayers, in some cases, only paid for about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of an eight million dollar project. So James is, I, I like James's approach where he's talking about a five million dollar bond amongst this group, but I don't think we would actually ever have that amount of a bond. I think it would be way less than five million. So you would use the mechanisms that are available to the selectmen and the and the town manager, the bond What's anticipation that? notes or whatever. Which this is working so I can talk back to, to, to appropriate yeah, I can, the can money. I'll, I'll go up there. The bond anticipation of short term financing and then deal with what you end up for your actual net cost and then you bond that. I think James' example here is he has showed that there is a revenue stream if Great Falls construction meets with the success that we think they're going to have. We should we should be successful too in what we think we need to to do to the downtown, and I think it can be a very well well run, well structured operation all the way through by just plugging the people in and staying out in front of them. Hey Frank, it, I'm borrowing James's computer here. We're still having trouble with the microphones on the desk. Um, I hear I hear, heard what you said, and is if. I were to go out and ask the public to put any bonds up right now is I would be run out of town on a rail. And, I agree. <laughs> and and um, is, you know, is these are all things that we've already talked about, you know, is as far as being shovel ready, we've been working on that for 10 years. And so there's no, no problem there. Is, you know, the thing is with the, the TIF, the tick tax increment financing, is most people don't understand it. And even if you explain it to them, they're still not going to understand it. So is, the big problem I see is just getting people to agree that we can move forward. Is, so <clears throat> we're going to have two new select men here, select people here come June. And I have a feeling that the dynamics on the board may change quite a bit because I know the people that are running for the office and um, is <clears throat> they they have a different outlook than you know, the pre the present board does. So um, is I think we need to have these discussions. I think we need to continue with them. But is just you know as as on the selectman side of things is I get calls weekly about tax bills and is I've talked to the town manager several times about how is I just cannot go back out for another bond in the near future. Well, that's what I said. I mean, you, you've got to be very careful on how you use that word because everybody has got sticker shock from the $7 million we, 
went from having no indebtedness in the town to 7 million. And then the water rate users are gonna have another 1.2 on top of them if they are successful with the, with the water program they're gonna fund. I, all I'm saying, Tom, is this is a very, very doable project. It can be have a, have a way less impact on the cost, and we can get everything that the town has supported because they've always voted in favor of anything that the Envision Berwick Group has brought forward. They have, they're supporting a comprehensive plan update. Um, I am not intimidated by eight to $10 million of work in front of the town, especially when I know the, the, the presentations and arguments we can make to secure our peace. I want to make Augusta and Bangor and Portland take a back seat to Berwick. Well, that, that, that one of the other things I wanted to bring up is that, you know, is you, you mentioned, mentioned Augusta in the legislature is Berwick has been woefully underrepresented in Augusta for many years is, you know, I've been in contact with both the state senators, already talking to them about stimulus money and <clears throat> infrastructure money. And, you know, <clears throat> but we need to pressure those people. We need to pressure our state senators and our state representative is, you no know, because we keep sending our money to Augusta, but we don't get a lot back. You know, we get money from the federal government obviously but you know state wise is you know we've been on the the short end of the stick for too long so I guess and, uh, and again we tactfully make that known to them because they already know it you know when i say augusta tom i wasn't necessarily i meant the legislature i meant the city of augusta well those, yeah i understand i understand that but yeah but, is, but you're you are right it's time yeah. for us and, and, and we don't have to be tactful about it is you no, know, I think it's time we start demanding it. Is you no, know, is we've we've asked for meetings with our representatives and been blown off. Is, so okay. I think that that's something that we need to really start doing is, as not just as individuals but as the different groups. You know, start putting pressure on our state representatives. See, maybe it's me. I, I'm a I'm an engineer retired, yeah, and we solve problems. And one of the things I always did with my young engineers when we hired them, and they would come into my office, I, a couple, couple of people on this screen know what I'm going to say. I tell them, don't bring me the problem. Bring me three solutions. I want you to bring me three solutions. And every time you deal with a state government or a federal government or a regulator or a funding agency or whatever, don't bring them a problem bring him a solution or several solutions you don't back them in the corner i disagree with you're you. talking you to an ex-state representative frank as i know I'm, how to, i know how to deal with state representatives yeah and, but i'm talking it, about dealing with the, the people in the regulatory agency that you're, oh, you're sending the applications to all right i'm yeah. talking about those well, people i'm not talking about the politics of it yeah. I and mean, if you have a project that is properly thought out, you can figure out the finances of it, how you're going to do it, but you can figure yeah, out. Yeah, but if you don't have the like back, you don't, if you don't have your state representatives and your state con uh, senators there backing up, there are uh, a hundred other towns with their hand out with all the same criteria already met also. Uh, so I, again, we, need to, we, need to, we need to use our political power here, which is something that we have not done. Again, so. you missed you missed my point. I'm no, I don't you miss your them, point, you Frank. Bring I, them a sol you bring them a solution. Yeah, and so we have been bringing them solutions. Say, so they have to say yes. Yeah. And then you turn around and you go to all these different groups, and they all get the credit for spending maybe a third of their money, but they get the full credit of the outcome of the project at the end. So. Okay. And I, I tell you, Tom, I I hope the selectmen are more than willing to make this thing a friendly gesture with the state legislator and everybody else because if we go in there thumping our chest saying you owe us we're not going to make it i'll tell you that well you have your way i have my way frank i'm sending it back to james thanks tom good spirit okay just... all in favor of tom's way let's have a show I... no I'm no, just actually before before tom before you wander off 
you know, is this like an open meeting? Can we ask questions and stuff as we're yeah. put all this together? Can yeah. you get Tom Tom back on the screen there? Good question. Yes, sir. I'm back. Thanks. Sorry, I'm I'm just I'm new to this, Tom, as you know, but I'm learning, you know, as we all are, as this is happening and taking in a lot of information, and I'm I'm um, I'm trying to understand, um, you know, the TIF is it's a big thing to get my head around, and and I heard you say uh, that if if you proposed five million dollars to the town you know in in a loan basically right in a, in in a bond yeah something like this, the two to five million bucks you'd be run out of town on a rail um and that you understand the tiff which i'm gonna uh, confess right now despite james opening the meeting laying it out i need to learn i don't really get it i don't i i need somebody who's smarter than me to sit down with the charts and explain to me i think i'm getting it but i'm not entirely as far as the tiff itself goes you're saying, I think you said you get it, but the people won't, that it's it's just the explanation of why this wouldn't actually be the same as borrowing $5 million would be beyond our ability to message. Is that right? It, well, what it is, what it is, is the tax increment financing is, the, it's, a, it's a, a function that the state set up so that when we have development like we're having, is the increase in the value of the property, we can take and shelter some of that from the state taxes as far as you know, school property taxes and things like that. And <clears throat> we give some of the property tax back to the company that's building over there, and then we get a portion of it. And over the year, that, that proportion changes so that eventually we get the majority of the money back. And what that does, it allows them the financing up front so that they can do their project. So, you know, I served on the Economic Development Committee up in Augusta for four years, so I understand that, you know, and, and I dealt with this. It, but most people don't. Even if you sit down and explain it to them, it's hard to visualize. Um, so, but, but the, to be clear, what, is the money, are we, is it money we're actually, if it's not money we're actually borrowing, if it's money that's coming back, but we're we, just looking we, to, to we, gap finance it, right? Right. Until that money comes back, where there's literally, it's like a bridge loan, right? Right. Essentially. But it's still a loan. It's still, we, we'd have to go out for a bond, we'd have to, you know, have the town vote on it you know, to get the bond, and then we'd have to pay it back, you know, and eventually we would be getting enough money back from the TIF to pay that bond back. But until that time, the taxpayers are going to be footing that bill totally. And as Frank said, we went out with the bonds for the fire trucks, we went out for the bonds for the improvements on the town hall, we went out for the bonds to build the new fire station and things so that you know, we're maxed out right now as far as I'm concerned. Well, and I wish we'd spend the money on something valuable like our dad. Yeah, yeah, something valuable, yeah. It is, is uh, I'm sure I, I will be reading, the, reading about that phrase on the hate book page and I'll just wait. <laughs> I'm going to uh, tell you, I, it's, it's, it's a lot to take in, but it does seem like if conceptually it... I don't really can, can can I ask for a little more help and education here? Am I am I slowing us down, James, too much by doing this? Not really. No, it is okay. it is as Steve pointed okay. out, there's, there's a Our lot of taxpayers putting the bill part, that happens before the TIF money comes out, comes back. So like on James's chart where it hits twenty twenty seven, that's where the money coming back from the TIF starts to we're looking like what, six years from now. Then, yeah. then, it, right. then, it, yeah. then we're right. over the hill, and then the taxpayers never get that money back in any meaningful way, right? They're footing the bill, but they never receive a break oh, from it. Other well, we we it, it, we we wouldn't be we wouldn't be sending sending a rebate back for the you know money that's already been spent, you know, to cover that bill. No, is yes. no the, the 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 way the taxpayers would benefit from it is that. 
once we paid off that bond, then all that money that we were using to pay back the bond would go into the general coffers. You know, so that's how the taxpayers see that return. You know, and you know, even even though we're refunding some of the property taxes back to the developer, we're still getting an increase in the property tax also. Sure. You know, yeah. So it's not like we're losing any money off the top. We're still making an increase in money. So. Uh, thank you for the clarification. And sorry yeah. if, if everybody else on this. Oh no, like, like I said, there's a lot, of, a lot of new people, a lot of new people. Now. A lot of new people, and you know, and it's it's tough to understand. Is you know, is I sit down with James and Steve, and still it you know befuddles me sometimes. So, is uh, so. Any other questions of me before I go sit down again? <laughs> yeah, one, one more. So uh, one of the things I, I I took in too is the the timeline as it relates to to basically money from from the current sort of federal administration as well as pandemic relief, et cetera. Is that right, Frank? Well, we're hoping. Is we so know that, 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 that puts this, like everything that we're talking about is stuff that sort of needs to be, it's not like we can say, this is a great idea. Let's wait till the TIF is, is over the hump in, you know, right, six right. years. We right. want to do something now. We just have to, Essentially, the, the, the Venn diagram of where everybody agrees is that this is good, right? We right. would love to have a downtown that has all this. We can't really make people excited at the idea of voting for spending the money, but it's, it's, that, that's where it's complicated, yeah. right? If we had a way to make people understand it that was clear and easy and concise... And right. that maybe yeah. people would vote for it. It's just that it's right. su super complicated. Right. And that's it, why my, my thought would be is to convene this smaller group, put this whole thing together, convene a meeting at the DOT, because the majority of our money that comes out of here could be funded through CACS projects, could be funded through Steve Landry's other money on Route 9, uh, the signalization could be funded out of that. Um, go to the state and have that sit down meeting and show them all of our effort to date, everything that we've got, including any, any funds that we have already set aside to help leverage, you know, uh, a scoring and an application you guys have never done anything like and that. sit down with them and get them to give you a, a nod of the head, bring them something that is a salute that you've got all the solutions and you can show them how it can happen. And if you get them to say, you know, this is something that we can get behind now with any level of credibility, you can package this thing in the public and present it to them. Okay. I'm not saying we're doing anything sneaky. I'm just saying we're, we'd like to go up there and say, Hey guys, we'd like to get our, our piece of the pie. And this is how we would like to get it. And this is what we've done to earn it. And what can we do to make sure you recognize this and we can score well in the next go around, whether it's CACS or any um, LRM project that you have set up in our area of the state. Make that and do that sooner than later yeah. and, and come away. Once you've, once you've made that assessment from them, at the local level, we can, we can develop this thing at whatever rate we want, pitch it whatever we, we want. And the, the biggest thing we got going for us right now is the federal government has spent $2 million on a Brownsville program. We have a, we don't have a Cahaya. We have a, 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 a very good construction group heading this thing up on the site itself. They're going to make, be making the same arguments, what they're going to do privately on their property to, to match up and made up with everything we want to do publicly in the public ways. And like I said, it's it's a win-win showpiece win if we do it right. And not and don't just go out in the street and say, Yeah, we're gonna raise five million dollars and bond it, but shit, the townspeople won't oh, excuse me, the townspeople won't support it because they got they right. got tax shock. No, so so, so this so that, scenario are we back on? No, no, I'm no, on no, over no, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna Hey, so, hey, so the, just, the, just the, the end of the, the bond, bond discussion. 
The whole point of bringing this up was to run the scenarios where the blue, once it hits that threshold, that's when there's no impact figure out there. So that's just the running running of this, this different scenarios where, again, yeah, we, we not, might not have to bond anything, but it's just a matter of getting in that timeline and, and getting the package of projects and getting the sequencing right. So again, I'll, let me be explicitly clear again. So once that blue line there, it crosses those, thresh, those thresholds, once it gets above that, that has no impact to the taxpayer because the TIF pays for the bond. So like, yeah, I think, I think we've covered this part of it. Like we will reach out and work on a plan together. So um, I'll be in, be in touch more about these plans. But we got a few other things on the agenda. Are there any other que any questions for anyone that hasn't had the opportunity to speak? Cool. All right, just to touch on this real, yeah, Jeremy, go ahead. I'm so sorry, uh, and you can stop me if I'm dragging <laughs> this out. I'm really, well, since all the brains are on the call at the same time, yeah. I'm trying to take advantage of all the smart people that are on here. If I were to make Trying to understand that plan in particular, if I were to make a connection between just a startup business and what we're talking about doing, I would say you're making a business plan and then getting your letters of intent from whatever in line so that you're, it was buttoned up, right? That's, is that what we're talking about, Frank, is like getting buy-in from, from the state as we put a plan together and then being able to present that moving forward that has all the kind of components together so that it makes getting sense. Buy, getting buy-in is a good term to use, Jeremy. Um, that's what we need. We need to get them, so not just to shake their head, yeah, but we need them to buy in the idea that if Berwick comes back in with this comprehensive plan, and we're going to look for funding over the next, I mean, CAC's funding, I believe, is every two years that they, they come out with their big, big monies. Um, get them to buy in and show them how we're going to carry this thing out. And that's why if you've got a Great Falls sitting there and saying, hey, you know, we got our own money in this thing. We're going to, we are going to advance this thing at the rate, if not at a greater rate than what is showing in the, in the projections. I mean, we just have so many pieces here that can make this thing work seamlessly if we do it right. James, what's the downside to doing this? What's the downside to doing to doing to moving forward with this what, with what you guys are presenting? No, I mean, the, these are the, the capital projects that we're moving forward with. We're working with transportation agencies right now, and it's it's just a matter of sequencing the different types of grants. Okay. CACS grant, there's uh, bicycle and pedestrian grants and and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, no problem. So this is more, the next, next discussion's more about, um, quickly, this is more of a planning and select board thing. Built into our land use ordinance, there is an annual review of our marijuana cap. I'll just quickly go over it. Um, we have quite a bit. We have um, storefronts and productive facilities that are yet to be developed. Um, I don't think we need to belabor this point. I mean, is there any, any Incl any inkling to want to for the select board to or the planning board to want to talk about this this cap um i mean my thing is i think there's a lot of things pending and i don't know if we need to touch the cap would be my recommendation i do not want to touch the cap yeah i mean the one, one thing to look at with the annual uh, benefit to the town with property taxes we can let that shake out um and i think we can review it a year from now. Is there any anyone from the select board that have anything they want to add about that? No, I don't. I, it, 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 I have I been, have been uh, uh, a lot of people have been talking to me about the, uh, you know, marijuana facilities in town. Is uh, you know, A lot of it is just general unease, no real, you know, specific concerns. And so is, I've been willing to let, you know, the planning board and you guys you know, decide how things go personally is, and you know, you guys have had your hands full, I know, with all your public meetings and everything. So uh, 
you have a better handle on it than I do. Is I know that you know, public safety had no complaints. Yeah, yeah. It's public public safety hasn't had any complaints from anything. So, is um, <clears throat> status quo, I guess. Yeah. So we'll. It's just kind of on the books to review every year. Things might change next year, but for now, I think we're good at where we're at. Uh, okay. Um, all these approved ones lost them again are on the clock, right, for them to be up and running or under construction within a one-year period of time, otherwise the conditional use lapses, correct? Correct, yep. Because I see that Silver Therapeutics on Route 236 across from the post office hasn't really done anything. Am yep. I correct in that? They have a building permit, but... It, but again, you've got to physically do something. You just can't pull the permit. Right. So yep. we need to monitor these things because they're all on a clock based on the various approvals that they were granted. And some of these, if they don't do anything, if they didn't make headway with the state on their retail licenses and those things, they may drop off. Correct? Yep. They may drop off. Yep. So I agree with Nicole. I was on the board with her and the, the cap is the cap and we shouldn't change it. We were too early into this thing to, to, to see it. But I think we had always said that the ones that will survive will survive. The ones that won't will drop off. And then as they drop off, we cut the cap back if we don't want to be a marijuana community. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's other two other discussion points that I dropped off the, the agenda. This one's pretty full. Uh, one on solar, one on impact fees. And I think I'll, we'll, if we do a joint meeting or through Envision Bureau Work or through the select board, need a little bit more time to discuss that. Uh, but the last thing, again, for the, to keep on the, the back burner for now, but it will be a key issue into the barracks future, is Ridland Road and Hatfield long range planning. There's a thousand acres out, out there between the, the purple there where it's R12 and a lot around Lake, Lake Hatfield. Um, so that's, I mean, if it's housing developments like Key Road, it could look like that. If you want to reserve, um, look at developing our open space plan. That's something the comprehensive plan committee is looking at, whether the town looks at using open space funding to purchase some of that open space. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an important thing. I think now is a good time to start thinking about it. Um, and probably the comprehensive plan committee is the best avenue to start working on that. So if there's any thoughts that pop up, reach out to me um, and we'll, we'll start working on, um, start thinking about what the best use for that land is. My understanding is the, um, the folks that own it, that tuck out turf, they have no interest in selling it, but things can change. Um, so if we want to work on zoning or anything like that. Um, well, again, James, this, was, this came up at the planning board, I believe Chairman Andreessen brought this up because he was talking about Hatfield and in particular he brought up the Ridland Road corridor and I know the town has has a Ridland Road bridge project and the discussion we had at the planning board that evening boiled down to well if we're going to repair the bridge out there which is a single lane bridge what are we going to put in there to repair it are we going to replace it in kind and that's where the discussion went on to say well what is the planning horizon for the hatfield pond area whether it's five years 10 years 25 years whatever we should make sure if we're going to put a bridge in there we put the right bridge in and if you and i reminded them that if anybody had traveled through Sanford and when going up the hill towards the John Deere factory uh, tractor place on the top of the hill Shaw's Ridge and when you went down through the dip before you came up to to uh, Central Maine Powers building they replaced that culvert in there and they put in these these concrete units and to me you could easily put in those same kind of concrete units to capture to capture the flow and keep rock depending on the time of year you do it and then do you put back a single lane bridge or do you put back a double lane bridge thinking ahead of what it's going to look like maybe 10 years out and just 
put it back in kind, I think is the wrong thing to do in a, in a misspending of money at this juncture. The whole Ridland Road corridor then should be actually talked about and understood on what it's going to mean in the future. And then you pull in some of the large stakeholders out there. There's probably three or four major property owners out there and every single one of them can turn that into a 120,000 square foot housing lot out there. And all that traffic is gonna go somewhere. So I'm just saying, if we're gonna spend money on a bridge, we should put the, I mean, on, the, on replacing that bridge, we should put the right bridge in and we should have a better understanding of what the horizon is for Hatland, for the Hatfield Pond area. I don't disagree with that statement. The The issue is that it's not just the bridge as well, though. It's the, the the whole section of the road is unpaved and a large portion of that road is basically, you know, tight one lane, two lane traffic, not just the bridge itself. So well, I, it, I even if we change, if we're talking about expanding the bridge, which probably should be done if we're going to do it, you're right, let's do it while, we, while we're out there. But to really expand that area, then the entire road needs to be done in kind, and that's easily another half million dollar project right there. And that's, that's exactly what I just said. You need to look at that whole corridor, and that's why it would be important to have a discussion with those stakeholders out there to see what their plans are and, and whether or not there is a there is a way to merge all this into the right right thing. If we don't ever want anything to happen out there, post the road is closed and let the bridge fall into keep into, into the river. I mean, that's an option. Not the one that I think people like, but that's an option. I mean, yeah, my inkling would be look at conserving some of the land, work with Tucko Turf. I mean, want to keep we want to keep that bridge open for access. I think. Hatfield's Pond is going to be a key recreational area that's going to be used. There's a couple other opportunities out there that are close by. So, but just so you know, uh, both of those bridges, the uh, Diamond Hill Bridge design is already done, uh, and we're getting estimates from the engineers uh, called with Engineering, and they're starting to work on the. Um, Midland Road Bridge, and each one of these bridges are being planned for being two lanes. Um, so uh, the Midland Road Bridge is actually in better shape right now. Uh, it still has a weight limit of uh, 23 tons versus the Diamond Hill Bridge, which gets a heck of a lot more use, has gone from 23 ton limit down to five. And that's the one we're going to be focusing on to get done first as a Diamond Hill. Now, when we talked about shovel-ready project, the bridges, Sawmill Hill, um, Ridland Road Bridge, and MS4, those are all design work will be done by the time this money comes available, if there is going to be something coming out of Washington for infrastructure. So they are all shovel-ready projects right now. The Sawmill Hill is in the design phase right now, uh, with Goral and Palmer, right? I think the state gave that to them. So within the next six months to a year, we can very, you know, surely, surely say to the state that we have four different projects that are shovel ready. We have designed, completed, and all we need to do is put them out to bid and if, if we have the money. And, and that's where we want to be. And that's, that's exactly where we want to be. That's, that's what we plan. Time, that's the first time I've heard that it's two lane on Ridland Road. It's yeah. the first time I've heard anybody say that the bridge replacement was going to be two lane. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. And uh, we are talking about on the Diamond Hill Bridge Road, uh, we're going to move that over uh, a, a bit to straighten out uh, the so it, the, it's not as blind of a turn as it is right now coming in so the existing bridge can stay and, and when we build the new bridge it will be more uh it'll be a different location but much more functional um we're going to have to purchase several pieces of property enough width to do that um, and we've already got at least one owner who said he's willing to sell us a parcel part of it um, 
and the other person hasn't responded yet, but I'm confident we, we won't have any issues with that. But these projects are all shovel ready, um, uh, and we just need to make sure that DOT, and we've involved the DOT bridge division on both of these bridge over the last five years. Uh, we've been talking with them because uh, the inspections keep getting worse. So, and the MS4 project is, is they're done. I think Malone and McGroom yeah, have finished the design. So it's just a matter of putting that out to bid. And they've given us, Malone and McGroom gave us a price <coughs> of 1.3 million. Um, and I think uh, uh, Christy has, thinks it might be more. Um, so we'll have to see when it goes out to bid, but I'd like to see the feds pay for that. I don't want to see the town pay for that. That's a big nut. So put that on the list to talk about when we go up to the DOT. Yep. Something that um, I was wondering about um, when you say that the Sawmill Hill Road itself, that project is in the design phase right now. Um, I was wondering, is does that include sidewalks or a sidewalk on one side of the street anyway? Not up, not up Sawmill Hill. It goes probably just past, um, just past the Gateway Gas Properties. That's where it stops. So it's it's mostly the project is mostly just the alignment of School Street. I'm, I'm I'm talking about when they redo the no when they repave the road. It's an opportunity to put in to continue the sidewalk no, that's all a, the way it's a to state, um, Route 236. That's a state project, and no, they just, I think it's just a top just pavement. Just, yeah. yeah, it's just a skim, shim and overlay. It's a it's a DOT project. They when James, when we do the intersection, that might be an opportunity. But we do have with the, with the Malone and McBroom uh, design for the MS4 project. We have sidewalks up on uh, Moulton Street to the uh, Great Falls Park, and with plans to bring it down to uh, the gas station. So that's kind of wrapped that all in together. Uh, but the DOT is going to pave all the way up to the top of the hill. I think what Pat's bringing up is something that's very simply we could add in there. And now you've got a sidewalk on Moulton Street. You're going to have a stub sidewalk coming up as far as just beyond the bank, below the House of Hope. House of Hope is going to be doing something on their front out there. And you've got a short span of sidewalk up to the top of the hill. That's why when we go to the DOT and we talk to Tom Raynauer and all those guys, we turn around and say, hey, let's throw a sidewalk in there for cheap money because you're paving the road. I mean, and then that's all part of our comprehensive plan of making it a walkable paving community. I mean, we got more reasons for them to give us additional funding because of what we have laid out over the last seven years that's what i'm saying there are a lot of gaps in this thing like downtown we've got the 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 m and m i plan for the downtown we should be designing that right now town square and all of that short money that we can put into that with the idea that we'll get those guys to fund that as part of a tax package i mean I, i'm just again we got too many opportunities here that if we do nothing we're not, we're, it's, we're to blame ourselves. Do we we can go in there and make all the strong arguments and, and we can come out of there with them buying in, Jeremy. We'd have them buying into the whole thing. Yeah, and that's, that's stuff that through, I think, Envision Berwick will be a, a point of discussion on the agenda ongoing if Jeremy will have me. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, I think, in terms of like the MMI project, um, like we're not gonna redirect one way and, and all that, but we definitely need to work on where benches go, get the street lights going, get the, um, you know, we need the streetscape, but we need to know where bump ups go and crosswalks and all, all that. We've got a concept plan. That's why I'm saying you've got to move it into the design phase. And then you, you merge everything on the, on the street side that fronts uh, Great Falls' project, and they're doing all that anyway. They can't yep. put their buildings right up on the street line without dressing up the sidewalk. So there's a good partnership that we can build from the private sector. 
And that works very well in making your arguments at the DOT yeah, that, and the other people with their funding. So that's a good point. Great Falls Construction will be a good partner. They will be a, a good partner. And there's some, some projects that are half them, half us in a way where there's intersections and sidewalks and crosswalks and all that. And we won't pay for any of them. And if we have to pay for them, we're going to use TIF monies that they're giving us anyway, back from the tax refunds. Yep. So, I mean, come on, guys. This is a very doable thing. What do you think we're doing? Yeah. We are doing all of this, Frank, just so you know. These I know. But it's but instead of waiting from month to month, a meeting to meeting, we should be doing something starting tomorrow morning, to tell you the truth, Steve. I, I know everybody's busy, but budgets are behind us. Um, we should at least be sitting down and, and sorting out all the pieces and who needs to weigh in on these pieces. Yeah, I think the like the CAX project is going to get moved up a year because of the stimulus. Um, I mean, we're going get, to get work on Great Falls Park, get to work on some of the site amenities. I mean, I, there's no there's no waiting. I mean, I, I don't think there. Yeah, I'm with you. Let's we're ready to go. And um, I think we need to I need to work on some of the numbers and kind of present a more clean look at some of the other financing options and as uh development starts happening we'll get a better idea of the development timeline and the revenue to the town and yeah i mean the we need to we need to work on the the concepts around town hall um i mean we we the next step is to work with great falls construction to figure out um who's going to be responsible for what what improvements in terms of the, the sidewalks um, along Sullivan um, and, and Wilson Street. Um, School Street's pretty squared away. Um, there's other pots of, of funding with the main bike pit program, and we know we got to replace our street lights. So that's that's quite a bit to, to go with. That's it's Patrick in the works. Adams has got a pocket full of money too. He wants to share with us. Yep, Ooh. Patrick Adams. That's the bike pit program. Yep. <laughs> I do have one more thing I'd like to ask if I'm allowed. Go ahead. I know Nicole's probably rolling her eyes saying, God, that brings back memories of the planning board. No, I love every minute of it, Frank. Yeah. Steve, when I was on the planning board, they did a big solar project on Route 236. That's a... Uh, the planning board is currently doing a big solar project that's out on Hubbard Road that they're, they're reviewing. What's the status of the town's discussion that we have had with Revision Solar? Because I haven't heard anything on that, and I don't think anybody has. We've been talking to Revision, and uh, right now, to give you an idea, uh, I heard from them today, but they're looking for us to invest or to be part of a project out in Sydney, up near Augusta. Um, and I'd rather, if I'm going to have the town direct the town towards a solar project, I'd rather do it something local versus uh, doing it for, we've been hit every which way from companies and people who want us to be part of their solar farm um, and we're listening, but we're, uh, these are all decisions that have to come from the board. Uh, Lisa Vargas, myself and James have all been part of that, um, discussing uh, which direction we uh, present to the board. So um, we know these projects are out there for, for Berwick, um, but everybody wants, everybody's, I'll be honest, everybody's in our face. I mean, it's, it's bump, being bombarded. James and I have meetings planned uh, with people who want to talk more to us. And, and, and Revision is the one company that we uh, have a little bit more confidence in than the others at this point in time because they have a history. So, but they are being discussed. So the town, the, the town does not have a footprint in town because I know you had talked about behind the police station possible. The town does not have a footprint in town that you would specifically put a solar uh, no. project. No, revision has actually uh, discouraged that because it doesn't generate enough power. They are leaning more towards uh, getting involved in the farms than in building our infrastructure here on town buildings or on town property. Because the, the amount of power that's produced 
won't be sufficient for what we need, for, according to them. Have you talked to the sewer district, uh, Steve? Because they had two proposals down there, one to put five acres of solar panels on top of the landfill, the sludge pile, yeah. which was frowned upon early on by the DEP, but they have since backed off. They backed off on that. I haven't talked to Jay in, about that recently. And I'm not sure it's on their they radar. Had a, second, they had a second one out in the woods. They own 34 acres down there. They had a second one out in the woods that they were actually going to clear cut and put put it in there. So again, if, and they obviously could generate power down there on five acres or 34 acres or whatever. But um, just I didn't want to lose that discussion between the sewer district and the town on where we might put something like that if we were going to actually put a footprint down ourselves. Yeah, we're still in discussions with them about taking uh, water waste. So, in fact, I signed a contract with them to, uh, and they, they would, uh, there was a group at the water station today, water plant, getting ready to drill uh, to connect to their, the sewer district on that. So that's what I've been focusing on right now. Okay. But I, and Jay hasn't brought up solar, but I can certainly throw it out to him again if they're considering it. But I, it's really coming down to the board giving me direction to, and, and I have to give them enough data to make decisions based on how many megawatts our needs are and, and can we generate it enough with our own, you know, our own power plant. You know, I mean, these companies are looking for 20-year commitments. Uh, that's a long time to tie into one group. Right. And, I, and I'm very reluctant to go ahead on that until I know a lot more information. We'll keep it on the agenda in the future, James, right, Sola? Yeah. Sure, yeah. It's, it's also, from a planning board perspective, it's a, it's a pretty massive use of land. And I think, I think we're going to get some pretty good property taxes from it. Um, but if, we, if, if it doesn't end up being profitable for the town, we might want to look at, uh, look at solar closely um, because, like I said, they're using 15, 20 acres, um, and we just want to make sure that the town is taken care of on that end. So we don't want to give up valuable land for something yeah, that's what that I know. might have a multiple uses. I, a, a sludge pile is a perfect place to stick a bunch of because you can't do anything on it but hold a sewer fest in a, in a, in a sliding arrangement in the wintertime. Well, between the fire station roofing and the property behind the fire station and then the police station roof, which is all facing south, uh, I, I need to get more better numbers from revision about how much power that would generate and can we run the buildings on that and, and also get credit for uh, some of our other buildings in town. So it's it's a work in progress. We just aren't there yet. So. I just I hadn't heard, heard much about it other than you guys mentioned it back a while ago and I just want to make sure it stays yeah, on. Yeah, no, it's on the radar, believe me, and it's in discussions, okay. but we aren't there. We just haven't had the opportunity. We just finished the budget, uh, yeah. getting ready for the Warren article, uh, which has been back and forth to legal. Uh, the board's going to uh, uh, sign off on it on the 23rd, so that will be behind us. Um, and then, just to give you an idea of what's going on, the uh, Wright Pierce uh, will start do it, talking to landowners uh, around the plant and up on Hubbard Road and Rochester Street for uh, aquifer uh, drilling test wells and stuff, so we're uh, doing that. Um, and, and also, just making sure that if we, something doesn't come out of that, we have a place to dump our backwash waste into the sewer, which is, uh, and we have that under contract right now, so it's just a matter of getting the plumbing work done. But there's a lot of changes that have to be made to the water plant. Um, one, if it goes with aquifers, or two, if we still have to draw it from the river, is uh, some serious updating that needs to take place. So yeah, I think that covers our agenda for tonight. Thank you for everyone for showing up. I know some stuff's more relevant to other groups um, than others, but it's, it's good for all of us to, to meet as regularly as possible. I know we try to do quarterly, so that would put us at some time in June, July for the next one. 
and I'll, I'll reach out with that time and um, reach out to me with any agenda items. Um, sorry for the uh, presentation and the I mean technical difficulties, but it, but it happens. We're pretty high tech here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, feel free. I'm, I, I think the next step for us, for anyone that had questions about a TIFF, um, I think it's much easier with like diagrams and there's some YouTube videos that explain it better than, than I'll I mean, attend the next Envision Berwick yeah. meeting and, and walk everybody through it and if the planning board members it's amazing. Uh, would like to come in and sit in on that I, I'll, I'll really do a basic introduction of what the TIFFs are how we capture the values where it goes um, and then the, there's the credit enhancement agreement which is part of of individual like Great Falls has a credit enhancement agreement, uh, which I, we think is really good. The board's approved it, um, and, and Great Falls has agreed to what we have, and they just have to sign it. Um, and then we can start, once they start construction, we'll start seeing uh, increased value, which is what we're looking for. So, uh, that's great. That's great. When, we, when we voted the tip in, wasn't there like a whole extra page? to the ballot explaining it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it was like a really long explanation and even I had to do research beforehand before we even voted it in to understand it completely. Yeah. And the, the big issue is going to be we had a big explanation of what it even was and now we're going to try to put it onto a ballot to explain how we're going to stop gap funding before we get there and then, you know. That's not going on a ballot right the, away. The more issue is the longer it's going to be to, to get harder it's going to be to vote in. And we've got to find a way to concisely explain it. And if well, we could do that, if there was a way to do that, <laughs> I don't think there would be a problem with getting concise. it through. But, so, <laughs> no, that, I totally, I, I, uh, let me jump in. I think you're absolutely right. I think that, that this may come down to a kind of uh, um, finding a way to message this that, that is, um, that gets a lot of information across in a smart, straightforward, clear way, whether it's visually or, or whatever. I've seen videos like on YouTube and you watch like looking up, how does this work? And somebody will make like a really slick, but simple video explaining how government works or the judicial system or whatever for kids. There may be something like that for this that Envision can help with, with between, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll come to you next. I, it's certainly worth looking into. I'll, I'll come it's to your next meeting. Eloquence of writing. It's really, it's really quite simple. But you just, I'll explain it to you at your next meeting, vision meeting, <laughs> so it's clear. And anybody can attend to that. I know, I think Frank understands the TIF and how it works and the credit enhancement because he's been involved in stuff like that. But if you're a lay person, it's very much Greek. And, and, and but it's not that difficult to, if you have it explained and and we're going to as james has shown by his charts the return that we're going to get over the next 17 years for both great falls and for the town of berwick is, is substantial and that's why tiffs work at least in maine so all right that's why it, that that saying show me the money show me the money show me the money and we'll show it on we'll show it on our audit reports how much we generate and how much goes we're back to them. To include that chart with the, with the vote if we ever get there. Yeah, well, we're, once he starts building, we'll get there. As he said before, he's got a pretty big investment here. He's not going to sit on it for very long until he, he needs to start making money. So. The important partner who makes their argument. Oh, is that a question? That's it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night.